What is going on, Cub Bangers? Today is Wednesday and it's really hot. This is my wife's G Wagon. I'm Alejandro and let's talk about cars, yo. Hit it, Pedro! Ah! In today's episode, I want to do something completely old school and go back to when I started the show and do a little bit of news. I'm going to give you guys an update on Dieselgate. We're going to talk about the new AMG GTR. We're going to talk about the new Panamera that was just announced. We're going to talk about a secret car. And uh, that's not so secret, but it's secret right now. It is because I'm not telling you. And we're also going to talk about SUVs and cars, like sports cars companies building SUVs. So let's get this party started and update you on Dieselgate. Dieselgate. I'm sorry, there's no budget for graphics, so I need to make the, the sounds and the graphics here. That is so stupid. <laughs> So for those of you who are not familiar, Dieselgate is that scandal that VW got himself into for lying or cheating in their emission tests for their diesel cars. Not all of them, a few of them. They got in trouble for this right when I started the show. So I remember this perfectly. And uh, I just want to give you guys an update right now. So the courts in the US have ruled and VW now has to pay over $15 billion in fines. $10 billion are going to go to the car owners for two things. One it's going to cover their expenses for their car. So they're going to buy the car back at the price that the car sold before Dieselgate affected the market. So that's one. And number two, BW is planning on paying these owners between one and $7,000 each for the inconvenience, which is very understandable. And that's a lot of money coming out of VW's pocket too. So not only that, uh, it, 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 you're and we're probably looking at the story and saying, wow, $15 billion, these guys are fucked. Well, <laughs> you haven't seen the, the end of that dick that's fucking them. And the reason why is because one, all of the stock owners or most stock owners of VW are actually suing VW too for lying to them and misrepresenting what they were doing with their cars. Two, uh, Europe wants to get paid too. And just like we paid our owners or VW is going to pay our owners here in the US between 1000 and 7000 and take care of their car at the value before the scandal started, uh, Europe wants the same thing. So uh, there's nothing more in here than to say good luck VW. And the reality is, listen, everyone's too worried about what's going to happen to the company and oh, and how much trouble they are. This is a company that makes anywhere between 20 and $25 billion a year. And I'm not, to be honest with you guys, I'm not completely informed about all of their financials, so I don't know. But for a company that, that has that much revenue, this shouldn't put you out of business. It'll put you in a tough spot, but you're not gonna sell anything because what are you gonna sell? You're gonna sell Bugatti, who's basically losing money every single time they sell a car? You can't. What are you gonna sell, Lamborghini? I think Lamborghini makes like 700 million euros a year, by the way, which, I mean, it's a lot of money, obviously, for any company. But that's nothing to cover that. So they're not going to sell Lamborghini. They're not going to sell Audi because they're going to be in deep shit. They're, gonna, they're not going to sell their own cars, obviously, and their own brand because, you know, they won't. So what exactly is to be expected? They're going to make a full recovery out of this. And I think uh, uh, learn a pretty valuable lesson. So uh, BW, <laughs> good luck with that. And now let's jump into the Panamera. Let's talk about new cars. Mm, that new car smell, I love it. So the new Panamera was unveiled today and it looks exquisite. Finally, finally they got it right and it's beautiful. It doesn't look like the older one, which looks like a fucked up fat butterfly from behind. <laughs> does that make any sense? A fat fucked up butterfly? Sure it does, sure it does. Uh, <laughs> the car is expected to be released in early 2017. There's gonna be two models, the 4S and the Turbo. Both of them are gonna be all wheel drive and also both of them are going to have the PDK 8 gear transmission that Porsche is going to include in them and there's going to be Apple Play. And let's get to the interesting stuff here, numbers. The numbers on the Panamera 4S, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at 2.9 liter V6 engine that produces 440 horsepower and that gets the car from 0 to 60 in about 4.4 seconds. So that's really fast for like their entry car. And the Panamera Turbo comes with a 4.0 liter V8 twin turbo engine that produces 550 horsepower and that catapults that car from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. Mind you, that's a big ass car, so that's... That's so fucking fast, Porsche. As I said before, these cars are gonna include AirPlay. There, there hasn't been any talk about Android anything. And I'm sorry, I'm one of those iPhone guys, so I'm happy about this. Uh, please save your comments for Android. I think it's a great platform. <laughs> aside from the Apple Play, and aside from the engines, 
And aside from that crazy retractable rear wing that it has, which by the way, it's included in the older Panamera. I, I don't think anyone noticed because of how ugly the back was before no one wanted to stare at it, but uh, it's in there. Aside from all of those things, the car looks amazing. It finally looks like a stretched out 911. And is there a better looking car, like classic, classy, and uh, uh, modern at the same time? I don't think so. I think that's a, a very good look. Well done, Porsche, well done. Now jumping into the second one. The AMG GTR. My God, what a machine. By the way, yeah, that's the one that Tim, AKA Shmi got. Dude, good for you. What a monster of a car. What a beast. So for those of you guys who don't know, AMG built the AMG GTS. This is the track focused version, even though it's street legal. It's a track focused version of that car. And they re-engineered the whole thing. It's not like they added a wing and, you know, changed the ECU and called it a day. No, they went fucking bananas on this boy. So let me start by saying this car is just mainly made to destroy everything on the track. The car has an extremely well-balanced chassis, which is the secret for Porsche's 911 success. And that's what AMG, I think, is going for in here right uh, uh one of those legendary cars that can go on and on and on and on and just perfect it every single way they added wider front tires and wider back tires you know for extra grip they also added rear wheel drive to the car like the porsche so now the gt3 rs has a legitimate competitor with that mercedes because it does kind of like the same thing i'm interested i'm very interested about that the car has active aero and cooling systems that's right not only opening up to uh, create some downforce, but also to cool down the car. I know a lot of cars do that, but this is a Mercedes, this is an AMG, awesome. This one is scheduled to release in the summer of 2017, but not with some bad news for us customers in the US. We're not gonna be able to get those cool seats because of uh, US regulations. So uh, check that off the list because uh, not happening, boys. Now, all of that sounds amazing. And let me tell you the specs of the car so that we can wrap our heads around it. It's a four liter V8 bi-turbo engine that Mercedes is dumping into that boy that produces 577 horsepower. That gets the car from zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds and has a top speed of 198 miles an hour. These cars that Mercedes is now making with AMG are proper track weapons. That AMG GTS by itself is a really good car. Price point, I haven't heard about the price point here in the US and uh, how many they're gonna make, but I'm really excited about this one and I really wanna drive it on the track. I really wanna see what that's like uh, compared to the uh, regular one and compared to the GT3 RS. Good for you, Mercedes. Thank you for giving us a, a little bit more track focused animals. And now jumping into the mysterious car that I was talking to you guys about in the beginning, uh, we're talking about the mid-engine Corvette. So apparently, finally, that's going to be a thing. Autoblog just got some shots on their website where you can see a very grainy picture of a mid-engine vet. And that is so exciting. I've never had a chance to push a vet, never in my life. But I can only imagine that putting that engine right in the middle of the car is going to do so much better to the car from everything that I've heard and seen. So fingers crossed that's gonna be the case because I'm excited. I, I wanna own a Corvette. It's one of those things that when you were a kid, you had to do, and now it's my chance. So don't mess this up, Chevy. And now let's talk about the last thing on the show, which is the SUVs uh, made by sports car makers. Does that make even make sense? <laughs> I hope so. Now that I saw that Alfa Romeo is coming out with their own SUV, I think it's official to say that Porsche did really, really well by sticking to their guns with the Cayenne and making them a con and everyone else following suit. I think it's brilliant that each and every single one of those big manufacturers create these cars. The reason why it's so good is everyone wants to have a Ferrari. Everyone wants to have a Maserati. Everyone wants to have a Porsche. Everyone wants to have those names, Lamborghini, and not everyone can drive them. A lot of people can afford one very nice car, but that's about it. Oh, well, poor people suffer so much. So with these cars, what the car makers are doing is they're inviting family people, family men, family women to say, you know what? I can buy myself an S-Class, but instead of that, I'm gonna buy myself a Bentley SUV. Instead of that, I'm gonna buy myself a Lamborghini SUV. And listen, the car makers don't have to break their heads thinking, how can I make this a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or an Alfa Romeo experience? You just need to create a fucking SUV with your name on it. 
And I'm pretty sure people will just buy it based on that. I know it's really shallow and I know it goes against everything car guys do, like, want, blah, blah, blah. But it's the fucking truth. Or, or what do you guys think? I think it's at that point where everyone just should come out with one and stop pretending that they don't care about that sector. Because that's going to be a very clogged sector later, so you might as well be one of the first ones. So cup bangers, with that I'm going to leave you with the question of the day. Which one of those cars are you the most excited about and why? Thank you so very much for watching. As always, I'm Alejandro and I do not approve this message. And I will cut someone off. So bye.